Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Catching Up with the Walkers. Thank you so much for stopping by this morning and spending a little bit of time with us. As you can see, I'm in the pantry. And if you've been here long, you know what that means. No, I'm not about to eat all these chips ahoy, which that's tempting. But in the pantry is where I have my incubators. So it's time for the next step. What's that step you ask? Well, I'm about to uh, show you. If you come over from Walker Farm Fam, I hope that you like, subscribe, ring that bell for notifications, and we're so glad you're here. So let's see what I'm up to now. So we got the incubator here. Eggs are doing great. I got my instructions. So um, right now it says that the humidity should be between, for chickens, 55 and 70. So every um, incubator is different. People tell you all different things, but for the hatchmate, I follow. Look, I got coffee spilt. <laughs> um, I follow this instruction booklet, and amazing things happen. So right here, I got my um, little little bath. Right here, I got my. I can't even think what it's called. Hydrometer, and this helps me. This is in Celsius. That is the temp. This helps me with the humidity. Everybody will tell you something different. I keep this just like it says between 55 and 70. I actually shoot between 60 and 70. Then if it drops down, no big deal. When I came in, it was at like 51. Added some more water. Now we're back up. We're good to go. So today is lockdown day. So let me show you. So as you guys know, we got the original eggs from Fancy on 14. We traded for a Walker Farm Fam hat. This is not a Walker Farm Fam hat, but we traded them some eggs for a Walker Farm Fam hat. I put them in, got them started, and then a few days later, they left us an awesome surprise on the front porch uh, with a few more. Um, so I stuck those in, and they're um, a few days behind the other. So I need the second batch to keep turning, and I need the original batch to go on lockdown. What's locked down? That's when you put them in and you don't touch them until they hatch. You don't open it. You don't turn them. You don't do anything. Um, and then they start hatching. So I need to switch these over. So let's show you how I'm going to do that. All right. So as you can see, we're not fancy around here. We got cords. We got stained coffee. But it doesn't really matter. So what I need to do is I need to get this second incubator um, at the right temp humidity and all that so I can move the eggs over for lockdown so this is what I'm going to do I'm going to pour in my water it's got to have water in the bottom and that's not near enough hang on all right let's try this again I forgot I had to use some of this water in that one so let's put some water in and there we go then I need the only the bottom one with the feet on it I need that one in there okay put the hydrometer towards the front so I can see what's going on in there without opening it up I'm not putting eggs yet because when I bring it over I need the temp and everything to be right so I'm gonna be setting this up so that it can get there so when I bring the eggs over they're good okay so to turn it on you just plug it in then I come down here to my guide chicken eggs on lockdown the degrees need to change a hair 37.5 I hit set, 37.5, that's what it was on because the last time I used this, they were on lockdown, I hit set. And then the, it shows me that the temp is going up. And remember, it is in Celsius. So when the temp gets there and the humidity gets caught up, we'll move them over. It's gonna take a little bit. So we'll catch you back in just a second. All right, so welcome back to the pantry. So several hours later, they're ready to go. I need to get the ones out of here that are on lockdown, leave the ones that need to um, keep turning. So I'll use my flashlight and take a peek as I'm switching them over, make sure they're all still good, and we'll go from there. I don't know how much you'll be able to see, especially in a banny egg, they're kind of hard, but that one's all black, all dark, so that means something's growing in there light and here's automatic automatically comes on when it gets movement so i gotta keep redoing it but we're not gonna spend too much time showing you how they're formed but you can see that you can't see through them if you watch my other videos see right at the bottom where you can see that's the air pocket so stuff is definitely growing if nothing was in it 
you'd be able to see right through that egg. So sometimes if you watch long enough, you'll even even see them moving. But I'm gonna I'm gonna go pretty quick so that we can get them in there. So our light in our pantry is automatic when you walk in. I manually turn it off and then after so long if it senses movement it comes back on. That's why it keeps doing that. Love that light but only bad thing about it. Now that one's super tiny. See that? It's just barely over there but it does have veins so I'll go ahead and leave it in here. Oh that's because it has an X on it. Da, 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 da. The ones with the X's haven't grown as much. So if it has an X, it needs to stay in the turners. I didn't put any X's in here, did I? You want to be careful that you don't accidentally bust them in this process because that would stink. Little air pocket growing awesome. Last one without an X. Still doing good. So, put the lid back on these. We'll have to rearrange the turners. All these are ready to be in lockdown. We won't open it or touch it again until they hatch. So you're not going to believe this because I know you think I'm a professional. I forgot to hit record. <laughs> so I don't know exactly what all you saw. I um, need to go back and look at the footage. But I think I, I think you saw me put them in the um, incubator on lockdown. I think all you didn't see is me rearrange the egg turners so that the other one will fit. So I'll show you that real quick. But I got one incubator on lockdown, one incubator still turning because it needs a few more days i got to look back at my calendar and see exactly how many days it needs and then we'll go from there so this will go back up now that i shut it but all i did was i rearranged a little bit so that those could slide around and now we're good to go still turning on lockdown won't be open back up till they start hatching so here we go so Cassie has all kinds of fun with the eggs. She is addicted to hatching, as you guys know. I don't know what I can do to help her, except other than just let her be until it becomes a bigger problem. But until then, we're gonna have all the eggs we need because she just keeps hatching chickens. So I've heard that eggs were getting high in the store. Uh, I don't know how high because we don't buy eggs, but apparently they're getting high. So this is just a good byproduct of that. Hey, Sue. Sue had to come out here and say hi. What are you doing, girl? Huh? A little shaded over there. Doesn't look very bright. But I just got home from work a little bit ago. And I was going to catch up with you guys, catch up with the walkers here, on what we're doing today. Right now, i got to cook supper. And I'll show you what's on the menu. So for me, and maybe for Cassie, we have some of our boudin sausage. And then for the kids, we got some hot dogs. That boudin is a little bit spicy, probably a little too spicy for the kids, but Cassie enjoys it, I enjoy it, and I'm gonna eat that for supper. We've got a busy night tonight. I think it's the kids' um, open house at school, so they're gonna show us all their projects and stuff like that and what they've been up to. And I have two things I gotta do with my cattle. And yes, some of you will call me the crazy cattle guy, um, and Cassie is the crazy chick, chicken lady. Crazy chick lady, chicken lady. but. I have to get the pen ready to haul off some cattle and I have to apologize for you guys for two things. So we'll head out in a minute, show you what I have to apologize for, feed some animals on the way because like I said, I'm in a hurry, but I'm going to bring you along and I've got an apology. So I was about to go out and do the normal chores and I looked over and I think this pig has trapped himself. He moves this hut around. Pig, you in there? Can you get out? I was thinking this gate, this uh, opening was to the fence. All right, it doesn't look like he's trapped. All right, you can get out if you want out, right buddy? Yeah. Uh -huh. 
You can get out if you want out. Oh, you can't? Well, let's see. Can you get out? Come on. Come on, pig. Come on out of there. I think he can get out. He's just uh, resting and relaxing out of the wind. I'm going to check his feeder out. Still got feed. And everything looks good in the drawers. So the goats are yelling at me. They're mad at me. They want feed. So let's head out that way. Oh, the kids are playing King of the Hill. Run, little kids. Zena, how's my girl? You having a good day today, girl? I missed you today. Zena's a great little puppy dog. Hey, I don't think people realize how big you're getting. She has grown exponentially since she um, got spayed. I don't know if that's always normal, but she just keeps on putting on the weight getting bigger and bigger and I'm glad because she has a lot of work to do out here and I like to see her healthy. Yeah Zena, you look healthy. You're not fat, you're just healthy, okay? And my shadow, Sue, the kids aren't with me, Sue's with me. Hey girl. Yeah. Doing alright today? Good Sue. Good girl. And of course Jojo, my loyal dog, always by my side. Good Joe. Well hey Alvin. Hey Alfred. You guys doing you guys ready to eat Lulu you want to eat all right all right all right so I got everybody fed oh JFK likes to hang out over there on himself and look at all these kids getting in there getting after this feed and the nannies are staying healthy shadows looking pretty good Oh, you all right there, buddy? I was choking a little bit. You're eating too fast. Yeah, you guys are eating too fast. Slow down. Slow down, all right? Look at that beautiful marking on this on this kid. Zena, what do you think? You like the goats? She's like, I don't know. I got to take care of them. I guess I like. I better like them. Zena is uh, not as tall as some of the livestock guardian dogs I've seen. Some of the Pyrenees, but for an Anatolian Shepherd Pyrenees mix. Uh, She's getting pretty big. Jojo, you just think you gotta be in the middle of it all, don't you? Oh, look at these kids. Oh yeah. Hey guys. Hey guys. I'm trying to get them calmed down. I know Zena, I'm not hurting your kids, alright? I'm not I wouldn't hurt your kids. I'm just I'm just petting them. Zena, please. Can I just pet them? That's all I want to do. Oh look, they're just going to get right in the middle of the feeder. Alright, alright Zena, alright. Zena does not want me to pet them. If, if I pet them, she licks me. And that's annoying. I don't like getting licked. So before I get to this apology, I've got some cattle that have to be fed. I'm going to start with the Highlands. The Scottish Highland Coos. Scottish Highland Coos is what we call them. Alright girls. So you guys can see I get that poured out in about five different piles. There's one over here, two, three, four, five. They can all move around and uh, get some to eat. Hey, how are you CC? I think CC is definitely going to be having a calf. Um, just by the looks of her compared to some of the others. She's a definite, puppy's a maybe. And Charlie, I think Charlie is a definite as well. Hey, Charlie. So just on my my view, that's 
that's who I think is probably bred. I don't know for sure. Uh, I know three of them are, and I know it's springtime, and that's when they're supposed to calve. So let's head out to the other um, cattle and see if we can get them fed too. Hey girls, how's the girls? Go on, girl. Go on. Go on. Go on, Blackberry. Blackberry, you're not eating, girl. Go on. So I made it out to the cattle, got them all taken care of, and now I have to apologize. We've had this YouTube channel for over two years, and in that time frame, I've worked with my cattle a lot. I've put them through the chutes, I've put them through the gates, I've messed with them, I've done, done tags on them I've worked them I've done all kinds of stuff and I've never done this but I've got my grease gun because I have to oil those gates I have to get some grease on them I've got grease hurts in them I bought the good ones when I bought them because I knew I was gonna need to do this and I apologize I should have done it a lot sooner but I know this weekend I'm gonna be moving some cattle Lord willing and the creek doesn't rise, I'll be moving some cattle. Um, let you in on a little secret because you're catching up with the walkers and you guys are our extra special subscribers. We've got two steers that are gonna be going to Adler Farms. So uh, let me see if I can show you real quick. So one of the steers just walked through that gate uh, I don't know if it's 518 or 516, but there's one more that looks just like that that's going to be going. And then the other one, what's, what's this one over here? That's this heifer over there. Um, that's possibly one of them. That's a little steer. He's going to be going to market. And let's see. There he is. 516. He's going to be going to Adler Farms for sure. So there you guys go, you got in on a little secret. Uh, who's going? So part of having a farm and part of raising beef cattle is saying goodbye to the beef cattle. Uh, I'm also gonna be doing some colon. Uh, I'll be apologizing for that later. I'm not quite sure exactly which ones are gonna go, but I have a feeling it's gonna be one that you guys like and really don't have any other choice. But for now, one apology per day. I'm gonna get over here and use this uh, grease gun and I'll show you guys a quick before and after on the gates and see if it makes a very big difference. Hey, 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 you and your long neck, get out of there. Get back, get back, get back. He's still in my corn. <sighs> so what do I got to deal with, people? No, Alvin, not yours. I already fed you. So that's the before. Hopefully you heard that. It's really windy out here, but hopefully you heard it. Here's a little bit of after. I'm 
Look at that, guys. No noise. Got all the grease in there. Grease the bottom one. Might have got a little bit too much on that one. But that sounds a hundred times better. This one is really bad too, I remember, but let me test it. All right, so let's see what a little grease will do for us. Whoops! I went on there tight or something. That's better. Instant relief. Oh, I'm going to turn it all the way around here. So much better, guys. So that is unbelievably better. These cows are thanking me right now. You heard them over here. I think they were saying, thank you, Gary. That sounded so bad, I never even wanted to get in that pen. So maybe now they'll just jump right in the pen and head to town with me when I ask them to. I don't think it works that way, but you never know. But hopefully this will also um, add some longevity. These are really good heavy duty. They're super heavy uh, gates, heavy pipe. Great for holding my animals in in tight quarters. Ah, ah, ah. 25, get back, 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 back. I've got a little bit of feed in there for the goats and the chickens that I gotta go feed next. But this should hopefully help a lot. And last time, I apologize. I know I should have done it sooner. The last two or three times, I know I need to do it, but I get out here to load the cattle. I don't have time. I've got to load them up. I got to get to the vet. I got to get to Tulsa. I got to get to the stockyards. I got to go, and I haven't had time to do it. But now, I'm going to finish them all up. I think the last comment I got that did it for me was um, rest in peace earbud wearers. So somebody said, for all the earbud wearers out there, rest in peace because their eardrums busted. Hopefully that'll help that problem. Um, but only one way to find out, we'll load some cattle this weekend and put them to the test. <laughs> all right, goats. We knocked all those chores out uh, pretty quick because like I said, we got to head over to the kids, have a little open house. Ranger did a project, I got to check it out. He's been working hard on it the last few days. Um, one of the planets and uh, the kids always have fun little stuff that they want to show us. Gonna put up my grease gun back in the spot. One thing, a byproduct of having the uh, expo day one at our house was I got everything cleaned up. And that means all my shop got completely picked up. I had to put, fit that camper in here. So it was a great time to, uh, to get that done. And I love to hang stuff up. I know some people might walk up to this and it, and it just looks like complete chaos. But for me, I know right where each and every item is and it just helps me day to day as I'm going through and getting stuff. We hear you, Rooster. He's out there being loud. I think Cassie's gonna be selling those this weekend. So, fingers crossed, a little sneak peek. Hopefully they'll be gone. But, I wanna thank each and every one of you for following along today. Here on Catching Up With The Walkers, we do um, always have planning and praying. So some of the stuff we have planned, I told you about, um, we'll be hauling some cattle this weekend. As far as praying goes, we just are continuing to pray for peace in Ukraine and we know that a bunch of you guys are too. Um, we're so thankful. Um, just really want to say a praise for how well the Oki Homesteading Expo went. I promise you, God had to have a hand in it because day one was outside. Weather was perfect. And 
we couldn't have had a better day. Day two, we had rain, it was cold, cold or cooler. It was inside the entire day. Um, day three, as you guys saw on all the videos, was completely beautiful. Um, just as smooth as everything went. I was helping with um, taking tickets and traffic and cash, and we never had any cars stuck out on the road for any amount of time. They just slowly funneled in all day long. Just the logistics of it all worked out perfectly. Like I said, that went to the planning of the committee and of the people in charge, but it also had a hand from God. I believe that God was with us, and he made it go as smoothly as he did. And I want to thank each and every one of you guys that came out. I got to give you a, a bunch of you a big hug around your neck. Um, I got to shake a bunch of hands, and I am kind of sad because we only do that once a year or only have plans for it once a year but hopefully we'll see you before next year if not we can't wait till next year so thank you guys so much for following along i hope that you have a great day god bless and i'll see you next time